Welcome. In this video, I'll introduce you to the iTree suite of tools. We'll learn some basic and background information about iTree and also explore a few key concepts and resources to help improve your understanding of iTree, how it works, and ways that it can help you improve community tree and forest management efforts. So what is iTree? Well, it's a free software suite which was developed by the U.S. Forest Service and partners. Uh, you can see some of those partners listed at the bottom of the page there. And, and iTree was really tools that were designed to assess tree and forest structure, ecosystem services, and value of a community's tree and forest resource. And we'll go back to those concepts in a little bit more detail. iTree was first introduced about 2006, and the idea uh, was to bring different tools and applications that were research-based uh, under one platform that could be disseminated and supported and improved upon over time. And so iTree was a kind of the culmination of this effort and it's now managed by this consortium of organizations. There are global partners and other collaborators involved in guiding and managing iTree going forward. iTree use has grown over the years uh, since it was introduced in 2006, and now there are many users uh, throughout the world with the advances in technology and new applications being introduced. So it is uh, expanded quite a bit, and it now is truly a global tool. iTree use has grown over the years from initially being a tool designed for municipalities it is now being used by NGOs, students, consultants, companies, uh, innovators, and other industry partners. Now the goal of iTree was not just primarily to improve tree and forest health, but also human health too. So it's also about people. And the, the idea was to do that through developing innovative tools that could be easily learned and used that are engaging, that would help people understand trees and forests, and the benefits they provide, and then thereby enhancing management and advocacy efforts. When you first start learning and exploring iTree, it can be a bit overwhelming because there are many different applications available. Uh, this schematic is kind of helpful because it gives you an idea of the relationship of certain tools. So you can see uh, in the upper right, Planting and MyTree are derivative tools of iTree Design, and Design was a derivative of iTree Eco. And what you'll also notice is that iTree Eco plays a role in just about every iTree tool, and we like to consider that tool as uh, somewhat of the calculator, or we like to use the term the engine. It is a tool that um, is used to derive a lot of the ecosystem services that all the other tools do. And the good thing about that is that that helps keep the iTree tools more consistent across platforms. And also that allows us then to attach or estimate ecosystem services for some of the aerial assessment tools where we actually do not have measured information about the resource from the ground. So tools like iTree Canopy, Landscape and County are aerial assessment tools, but they also estimate ecosystem services based on background processing that was done by iTree Eco. The iTree website is also a very helpful resource, and at the bottom I have a link to a page on the website called Which Tools Should I Use? And this gives you a basic description of these particular applications and what they do. One of the other things that helps guide your decisions should be understanding your own objectives, what you're trying to achieve, in addition to understanding the iTree tool advantages, limitations, and options. And then what are your resources available to do a project with iTree, your technical capacity and skills, um, how much time do you have, who is your intended audience, uh, these are all good questions that you should kind of ask when you come to that crossroad of trying to decide which tool is the best for me. We use the term tree benefit based approach when talking about iTree and really that starts with tree and forest structure. 
and tree and forest structure has to deal with the tree species, canopy cover, leaf area, how trees are distributed across the landscape. Uh, but that is kind of the foundational piece. And so we use that information then in the model to estimate what are the functions that the forest structure or tree structure is providing. And then other models are used to, uh, to attach economic values to those services that they're providing. And by understanding that, what are the benefits that the forest and tree resource is providing, that allows us to be more strategic uh, in our management planning and policy efforts. But it just doesn't stop there. We also have to ask, are we effective at our decisions, our plans that we've implemented? And so we also want to use iTree for performance measurement. And so in an example here, seen has canopy changed over time. And so if not, there might be reasons to make changes in the plans and adjust our efforts as needed, and then we can start to cycle over. The concept of structure, function, and value applies to multiple scales and land types. So it's just not something that we see at the city level or a park level, but it also could apply uh, to small scales, or even a, an individual home. So the decisions that a homeowner makes in terms of uh, planting trees and placement can affect things like energy effects. And so these uh, concepts can apply to many different scales and land types. One of the other concepts that's helpful to explore is the relationship of traditional tree inventories and how that relates um, with eye tree benefit assessments. So a street tree inventory or park tree inventory is a very common management tool and that's one of the most common questions is can I use iTree for my tree inventory and iTree was not necessarily designed for conducting traditional tree inventories and tracking things like maintenance over time and generating work orders but the data is similar that we use and so that tree inventory information is somewhat of the foundational piece that's used in a lot of the iTree assessment. So I want to just chat a little bit about that so you can kind of understand that relationship. Tree inventories use some of the same information that iTree uses, such as tree species, tree diameter, and tree condition. And those uh, information can be used, very helpful for management and, and understanding the resource. There's a saying, you can't manage that which you don't understand. And it starts with collecting data about that resource. And just having those few variables, of size and species and condition, really can give you some powerful information about the structure, which can help in managing that. So understanding things like species diversity, the condition, maintenance need, uh, susceptibility to pest and disease or existing pest and disease, uh, risk factors that you have to deal with. So the iTree model starts with similar tree information or structural information. So iTree uses the field measurements and the information about the species to estimate things like biomass, leaf surface area based on equations uh, for species. And if specific species equations aren't available, it then uses averaging of other equations. And so the idea is trying to get at how a tree is interacting in its local environment. So in order to do that, in addition to that structural information, the model has the information about your location based on how you set up a project. It also has hourly pollution data, hourly weather data, information about the city or location, such as the growing season length, the temperature, um, elevation. So it uses all these different environmental and locational and geographical factors to understand or model how a tree and forest is interacting in its local environment. And then it uses that information to estimate functions, gas exchange, uh, water interception, evaporation, and so those, those functions are then turned into ecosystem services, such as air quality improvement, hydrology effects, energy effects, if that data is provided. 
So there are a number of different ecosystem service modules that are available and this can vary by application and then when some of this data isn't provided uh, the model then has to use background information based on regression equations or defaults and so for tools like the canopy assessment tools where it's estimating ecosystem services based on per acre of forest it then has to characterize that forest based on other data in the u.s that would be say forest inventory analysis information or other data that might be known at the county level so the estimates could be less accurate the more information you provide in the model the more sophisticated the model such as using itree eco the better your estimates uh, will be or the more accurate at the bottom of this particular page, I have a link to a document that I just want to pop up real quickly, uh, which is also on the website, and this provides a lot of background information on the model and all the iTree tools that are available. So if you want to look at any one of those particular ecosystem services, you can go to this PDF and discover more about how iTree assesses for a structure and look at the equations for that, or you can look at uh, the data that's used for estimating volatile organic compound emissions. So there's a lot of information that is available on these tools, and this will usually kind of take you down uh, a journey of exploration of looking at um, all the documentation available for these tools. So this is a great resource to keep in mind as you continue learning more about iTree. So what type of results can you get from iTree? This is just an example from iTree Eco. Uh, number of trees, species distribution, diversity information, much uh, depending on the tool. This is one of the more sophisticated tools that we have up here right now and it's showing a distribution by DBH class which is a really helpful way of looking at the tree resource to get an understanding of age structure across a uh, forest resource but you can see that there are many different uh, reports that are available in this particular tool this is one of the again the most sophisticated tools that is available within the iTree suite and this is just an example of the functional analysis that's available in some of the iTree tools and, and typically what you'll find in uh, many of the online tools is pollution removal uh, carbon storage hydrology effects and uh, energy effects in some cases depending on the data that are provided uh, a tool like iTree Eco here actually goes beyond that and it has uh, many uh, newer models available too and then you can even see there that there is a human health air pollution impacts and this is not available uh, depending on all the tool that you're using or for international projects just because the data is not available uh, in some of the international locations. So some of these are US specific, but it just gives you an idea of structure and functional analysis available in these tools. So as we wind down this iTree introduction, you might be asking what's in it for me? How can iTree help me? And cities around the world face numerous challenges from poor air quality, uh, climate change adaptation, mitigation, dealing with extreme weather events, but then there's also socioeconomic challenges too. Uh, how to protect the most vulnerable people and make sure natural resources and related benefits are equitably distributed. And so there's there's an opportunity for iTree to be part of that discussion uh, in your city. Many different ways that iTree might be able to help you and just starting with being more strategic and making better decisions about the forest resource and how that relates to the populations of people that you're trying to help or improving upon policies and programs and advocacy efforts or making a case for maintenance or tree preservation too. And then going beyond that, if there's, there are other factors, too, in terms of the economics that might help, too, where iTree can help, whether it's uh, just retaining businesses and residents and improving um, tourism and investment and green industry jobs. So there are a number of different ways that iTree 
can be used and has been used creatively by numerous cities throughout the world. So hopefully this brief introduction gives you a snapshot of you know what iTree is, what it can do for you. There are many learning resources available online, uh, video learning on just about every tool available, some of the documentation available that goes into the uh, the depths of how the models work. So there's uh, a point of departure for you to learn more and good luck and we hope that you find iTree helpful. Thank you.